everyone and welcome back to Proving the Concept, the podcast where we dive into the weird, wonderful and sometimes downright bizarre world of science and technology. I'm Sarah Goffin and today we're talking about something that's fundamental to life itself, yet so complex we're still uncovering its secrets. This episode, called Burst of Energy, is all about the purinergic system. If you've never heard of it, don't worry, you're not alone. But trust me, by the end of this episode, you'll see why this molecular communication system is one of the coolest things in biology. We'll start by breaking down the basics, what the purinergic system is, and why ATP, the cell's energy currency, moonlights as a messenger. Then we'll explore its ancient origins and how it evolved into a system that controls everything from pain to taste. We'll also dive into some weird and wonderful facts like how parasites hack this system and how scientists are using it in cutting edge bioengineering. Finally, we'll spotlight a brilliant scientist whose groundbreaking work has shed light on the purinergic signaling in the brain. Ready? Let's dive in. With the basics. What is the purinergic system? It all comes down to one molecule, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. You might remember ATP as the cell's energy currency. It powers everything from muscle contractions to cell division. But here's a twist. ATP isn't just about energy. It's also a messenger. Think of ATP as a text message between cells. When one cell releases ATP, it's like sending a notification to nearby cells, telling them to take action. This process relies on purinergic receptors, proteins in the cell surface that detect ATP and convert it into a response. Now, this might sound like a minor detail, but it's not. Purinergic signaling plays a role in nearly every major biological system. It helps regulate blood flow, control inflammation, and even trigger pain responses. Without it, life as we know it wouldn't function. What's really fascinating is how widespread this system is. Purinergic signaling isn't just a human thing. It's found in nearly all living organisms, from single-celled bacteria to complex mammals. It's like a universal language written in molecules. And that brings us to our next question. Where did this system come from? To understand where the purinergic system came from, we need to go back billions of years to the origins of life itself. Imagine Earth as a bubbling cauldron of chemicals. Early life forms, single-celled organisms, needed a way to communicate, coordinate and survive. ATP, already being used for energy, was the perfect candidate. It's small, stable and easy to produce. In these early organisms, ATP probably served a dual purpose, providing energy and sending simple signals. For example, a single-celled organism might release ATP to warn its neighbours of a threat or attract them to food. As life became more complex, so did ATP's role. In multicellular organisms, purinergic signalling started controlling more specialised processes. By the time mammals evolved, ATP was involved in everything from neurotransmission to immune responses. And here's a fun fact, purinergic signaling isn't just important, it's ancient. Researchers have found evidence of purinergic systems in some of the oldest known organisms. It's a molecular time capsule linking us to our earliest ancestors. Now, let's get into the weird and wonderful quirks of the purinergic system. First up, pain. When you stub your toe, why does it hurt so much? Well, damaged cells release ATP as a distress signal. This activates purinergic receptors on nearby nerve cells, which then send pain signals to your brain. It's a super efficient system, though not one you appreciate when you're hopping around the room in agony. Next, parasites. Some parasites are masters of molecular sabotage. They can hijack the purinergic system to manipulate their hosts. For example, certain protozoa exploit ATP signaling to suppress the immune response, giving them free reign to invade. And here's a tech twist. Researchers are exploring how to use purinergic signaling in bioengineering. 
Imagine implantable devices that communicate to your body using ATP. This could revolutionize everything from medical implants to drug delivery systems. But it's not just about biology or technology. Purinergic signaling also has surprising roles in everyday life. Did you know that ATP helps you taste food? When you eat, your taste buds release ATP to signal your brain about flavors. So next time you enjoy your favorite dish, give a little mental shout out to the purinergic system. As promised, let's highlight a scientist who's made incredible contributions to our understanding of purinergic signaling. Today, we're talking about Dr. Sperla, a neuroscientist from Hungary. Dr. Sperla has spent her career studying how purinergic signaling impacts the brain. Her work has focused on neurological disorders like epilepsy, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. She's shown how ATP and its receptors can either protect or damage neurons, depending on the context. One of her most groundbreaking findings is how purinergic signaling contributes to inflammation in the brain. This has opened up new possibilities for treating neurodegenerative disorders. Her research is paving the way for therapies that target purinergic receptors, offering hope for millions of patients worldwide. That's it for today's episode of Proving the Concept. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review and share it with your science loving friends. And as always, if there's a topic you'd like us to tackle, drop me a message. I'd love to hear your ideas. Until next time, stay curious.